It's up there with the expression, you look tired. The words, your skin looks dehydrated, made no one happy ever. And it's the kind of thing you might hear at a beauty counter in a department store. Not a great way to approach a sale. So what does it actually mean? Well, dehydrated skin, in essence, lacks water. And it's a transient state, typically. If you're prone to dry skin all the time, well, then you've got dry skin. But dehydration is something that can affect anyone, even those with oily skin at a given time. And rather than being a sign of skin neglect, it's often a sign of the opposite, that you're doing too much. So today I'm going to share with you my top dehydration hacks and make sure you stay to the end because I'm giving away the best one last. So the first thing I want you to do to tackle dehydration is to look at what you're using and go on a diet. So essentially a skincare fast. More often than not, when it comes to dehydrated skin, I see patients who are just doing too much. They're addicted to their products in some ways. And you know, I encourage decluttering your bathroom shelf um, as the very first thing that you do to solve this problem. Now that can unleash a lot of guilt, sort of remorse, and a feeling that maybe you should just choose them all up, you know, um, so you're not wasting things. Do not do that. Get them in that box, get them out of your bathroom, and by all means donate to something like Beauty Banks, which is a great cause and a great way of moving your products along without the guilt. Now, common categories when it comes to doing too much, using too many acids, over masking, double cleansing, and overly physical exfoliating. So those are the things that I see that can commonly promote uh, dehydration in your skin. So before we try to solve a problem, let's prevent it. Step number two is to look at the air quality because particularly if you're working from home, the air might be a lot drier than you're used to at the office um, or vice versa, check your bedroom too. And a humidifier is the way to go if it feels like your environment is playing a big role in driving your skin to become dehydrated. Essentially, all of us are losing water from the surface of our skin. So we have a shower in the morning, we wash our face, we put on moisturizer. That's essentially trapping a certain amount of water in our skin, a bit like the way cling film keeps food fresh in the fridge but invariably over time, a proportion of the water that's in your skin will evaporate, what you call transepidermal water loss. So if the air in your living space is more humid, it will discourage that because there's less of a gradient from the skin out into the air. Brands I like include Stadler, um, which is a rather chic Scandi brand, um, very effective. And if you're feeling fancy, Dyson does a great one too. Now, step number three, as we enter autumn and leave summer behind, is again to look at the way you're hydrating your skin. So you might have switched to something gel-like, or you might even skip a moisturizer altogether if your sunscreen has quite an emollient base, but coming into winter, you will need a little bit more support. So I would recommend seeking out a well-balanced moisturizer that contains both occlusive ingredients, some humectants and barrier repair ingredients. The occlusives though are particularly important and the ones that I like include shea, squalene, mineral oil and silicones, silicones to ensure that you have a nice non-pore clogging barrier preventing water from escaping from your skin. And taking that point even further, step number four is to adjust your skincare with the seasons. Now, particularly if you're prone to a sensitivity type condition like eczema or rosacea, where increased transepidermal water loss is part and parcel of the pathology, you'll definitely want to look at the actives in your routine as well. And particularly to the vehicle of some of your actives because ingredients like alcohol, or even fragrance that might be fine in more humid conditions can start to really deteriorate your barrier when it comes to colder weather, less water in the air and just lead to more problems. So a, a kind of a careful look at everything you're using, including your actives is really important. You might even wanna think about stepping the potency of your actives down. That's nothing to be worried about. When the skin is drier, things potentially can penetrate a little more easily. So there may be no need to push your skin as hard, particularly when it comes to acids and retinoids. 
And so we come on to point number five, which is to keep it going. Now, this really is about coming full circle to the first point, which was all about um, overuse of products, maybe too much product hopping. Maybe you're a beauty box subscription person. And maybe you've just got like a whole array of serums that gives you great pleasure. You're collecting them like a magpie, but you're using them a little bit haphazardly, a little bit sporadically, and overall not delivering that nice consistency that skin really loves. So I think it's really about knowing yourself, removing temptation, keeping things nice and sleek and minimal, using products up until they're finished and then replenishing so that you avoid the temptation to product hop, because that really is the key. Building on good foundations is the secret to great, predictable skin. Recognize any of these issues in your routine? Well, I hope this video was helpful. And if you are having issues with dehydrated skin, do check out my video on repairing your skin barrier, which will give you a step-by-step -step plan to getting things back on track. Last thing, do hit the notification bell so you stay posted when we deliver a new video to you. In the meantime, thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.